I think this album is really a fusion of, uh, of all the musical experiences uh, I've made in my life. You know, there's my, uh, my jazz guitar playing, very intellectual and, you know, serious jazz albums. And then, as a songwriter, as a producer, I would work in different environments and write pop tunes, hip-hop tunes, R&B. And it's really the first time in my life I decided to, to bring these two worlds uh, together in my own music. It's a, it, it's a jazz project, you know, with a pop sensibility. Uh, the band is the same, it has uh, Tony Gray on bass and Mino Sinero on drums, which I've worked with, you know, basically my whole life. This is basically a really a big guitar album uh, with a lot of different guests, from Shaggy to Melanie Fiona, Ice-T, Zuccaro, and one of their prayers. So if you love guitar, you know, you're definitely gonna find something you like. If you love uh, great vocals, you got great vocals. And uh, I think anyone can really find something, you know, in this album that they can appreciate. Growing up, uh, I've listened to Rade Lerham of the U2. Uh, it's, a, it's a documentary um, that shows how U2 went to America. I had to cover a, a U2 song. I picked one because of the unique lyrics and, and the amazing message that one has. And the reason why I picked uh, Isabella Langren uh, to do the song is because uh, the quality of her voice and her phrasing, yeah, it's, it's really unique. So instead of choosing a rock singer or a more obvious choice, a safer choice, I've chosen her. And uh, I think that the result, it's amazing. Cause if summer's here, I'm still waiting there. And winter's here, and I'm still waiting there, yeah. Okay. I picked uh, a Bob Marley song, Waiting in Vain. In the mid-90s, I was stationed in uh, Aviano, Maniago, uh, in the Air Force Base. Uh, you know, was the, the, the cost of a war. And uh, I remember this uh, song, the Shaggy song called Bombastic, uh, coming on, you know, day and night. That song would really cheer me up many, many times. So with Shaggy, uh, do a collaboration with Shaggy, it was always mandatory for me. Cause I know how to do my thing. And uh, I brought in Reed to bring that that woman perspective, that, that, that sensual and that, that just the woman sensitivity. So me and Mino Sinello have been uh, playing together for the past, uh, I think, 20 years in uh, different groups, different albums. For this particular album, you know, besides playing drums, I said, Mino, you know, I really want you to, to sing and I want to write a song with you. So me and Mino were looking at um, my laptop and I had a picture uh, that I took uh, out at sea in the Bahamas. It's almost like the sky and, and the sea are melting together and it's like deep blue vibe. And uh, we wrote a song, you know, about paradise. Feel familiar, but I'm not sure I'm Growing up, I was listening to Zucker all the time. And then through the years, I've seen doing these amazing duets with, uh, with Miles Davis, B.B. King, Eric Clapton. When I approached him about, you know, doing a song, you know, for my album, uh, he proposed this, this song called Someone Else's Tears. It's a Zucchero song uh, with lyrics written by Bono. So to work with Zucchero, you know, after seeing him playing with all these uh, great artists and listen to all the great music he's done in his life, it's, it's definitely you know, a big honor for me. Someone else's tears. Hey, what up, Fabrizio? This is Ice. Uh, just want to let you know we had a great time at your concert. You was the guitar playing beats. Guess what? As a kid, I always had uh, an amazing uh, amount <laughs> of discomfort in uh, education. There was always this this problem between me wanting to be a musician and playing music and uh, my parents, uh, teachers and the whole society, you know, being against it basically. Because it was something like it was not secure. What is it being a musician? What do you really want to do? We don't need no education. That was my first approach to the song when, you know, growing up I was just listening to it as being a little rebel. But then, with the World of Berlin event in 1994, I think, 
uh, it totally also changed, you know, my view of what the, the work could mean in society. I was able to, to call ICT and one of the press and, and read. ICT and M1 have brilliant minds. They were able to come up together with amazing lyrics uh, that they really speak about discomfort in society. Parents delusional, they club like the rich ball. You're just another brick in the wall. And the uh, reads just sounded amazing, in the, as usual, in the, in the chorus. Hey, teachers, leave them kids alone. When I was about 10 years old, uh, my aunt uh, gave me for Christmas a, a cassette of Jimi Hendrix. And I think that uh, my life has really changed forever from that day. I mean, Jimi Hendrix, like uh, probably for every other guitarist in the world, you know, the first time you hear Jimi Hendrix, the whole world changes. So for this project, uh, I really wanted to cover one of his songs, and The Wind Cries Mary is a song I've always loved. Instead of choosing a rock singer, uh, I picked Melanie Fiona, the great Melanie Fiona, who was an amazing R&B singer and she created uh, with her tone and her phrasing uh, a really really original uh, version of it. And the Many years ago, uh, I remember being uh, on the road uh, in Italy and um, I decided to don't sleep and just to, to watch the, the, the sun rising. I could really feel there was going to be one of those amazing, uh, warm and just beautiful summer days. And, um, and I was really trying to, to put this, this emotion uh, that really caught me unexpected uh, that morning uh, into the song. And this is um, what the sun is rising, you know, was written. When you grow up in Italy, even before you know how to write and read words, so you're really small you for sure know what a Ferrari is. I'm lucky that, you know, later on in life, you know, my, my drink came through, I was able to race a Ferrari and to own a Ferrari and, uh, you know, I really experienced it for myself. I really wanted to be able to, to translate uh, the, the passion, the adrenaline, the speed um, into a song. I didn't know really how to, to write a song. It could be sentimental, it could be uh, whatever. I decided, you know what, probably the flamenco vibe is the best one because it has the speed, it, it has the adrenaline. So that's how Prancing Horse uh, was written. So Fijo Maguado, it's uh, probably one of my favorite songs from uh, Cesare Voria. I wanted to do my, my tribute to her. And for the song, I called Claudia Cunha. I think that Claudia really brought to the song a lot of depth, uh, a lot of emotions, a lot of colors. For me, it's an original tune uh, that I wrote with Algebra Blessed. It's about you know trusting another human being uh, and, and trusting a situation in a particular moment. And uh, I think that this goes really well with the spirit of the album because that's what this album is really about. It's about taking a journey um, into an, another space for a moment and you know being like just really free to appreciate your life and where you are in that particular moment. All of my music <laughs> comes from real life experiences. Once in a Blue Moon is a song that I wrote uh, many years ago. I remember that was probably the first time I really fell in love with somebody uh, really deeply. And uh, it was a much older woman than me. It was actually cool that I, I finished the song before I realized that, you know, I wasn't really in love and uh, it's, it hasn't really been the experience that I thought <laughs> that was going to be. But at least, you know, I got the song out of it. Yeah, Once in a Blue Moon uh, features Isabella Landgren again. There is something about her voice that is really like mature and timeless. I think, uh, you know, that she could have done the, the best job and I think she did. Right now it's uh, the last track of the album. It's a solo guitar piece. And it's also the last song that I wrote and recorded uh, for this project. It's kind of a you know, brief moment of, of meditation, you know, of, of, you know, after recording for one year, 
you know, with all these artists after the whole, uh, uh, you know, experience and uh, emotions, you know, about the project. I just put them, you know, in this small piece of music as a last track so I can basically say goodbye to you on, on, on the emotion that I really left the album with. I mean, this album really started from uh, uh, a necessity of mine to express just happiness and being able to be really happy where basically where I was in that particular moment of my life. And um, because of that, I really wanted to reach as many people as possible. I wanted to really give some music straight from, you know, from my heart and, and, and give it to just anyone because it has a lot of uh, jazz harmonies and but the arrangements and, and the rhythm that I've chosen you know they're not typically you know jazz rhythms so it kind of uh, appeals to you know to any audience you know that just you know feels music and feels good music it's not particularly just for for, for a jazz audience it's uh, very refreshing for me and it's uh, also very exciting because it's something that I've really never done before and it's the first time I come out you know with an album like this